I'm Kevin Carmichael, product manager here at Lakeshore Cryotronics. And today we'd like to do a demonstration of Lakeshore's new tabletop hall measurement system. Okay, let's look at the components of our tabletop system here. First of all, we have the M91-HR. That's the high resistance version of our fast haul measurement controller. That's really the workhorse. It's doing all the measurements and doing all the calculations for the system. We've combined that with sample holder, a very high precision sample holder and magnet system. And then all of that is being governed by the MeasureLink software, which is helping us provide a very simple and easy way to make, make measurements. So looking a little bit closer at what we've done here, uh, the sample holder we've integrated from our 8400 premium electromagnet system. This is a very high performance sample holder. It is completely electrically shielded, including the top of the sample well here. Sample well provides us a complete electrical shield all the way up so that really minimizes electrical noise. We also have guarded triax connections coming in from the M91-HR. Those guards are maintained all the way through our sample holder, and in fact, all the way as much as possible down through our sample card directly to the connections. So we'll get into the sample cards in a minute, but we, all, we do have soldered and probed versions of these cards, and we'll go through a little bit of that in the demo here. We also have a purge valve here. This is a low pressure relief valve and a purge connection in the back of the holder here that allows us to have a nitrogen purge and flood the measurement compartment to free it of O2 for some samples that are sensitive to oxygen. We also have a vacuum. We can, we can connect a small vacuum pump here and with a modified top here, we can go with some hermetically sealed triax connections and provide a vacuum option so that we can actually have the sample in vacuum as well. So all of those things go together to really make this sample holder very appropriate for high precision measurements. So measuring very, very small all voltages and doing analysis on some very, what are typically very tough samples in this system. Okay, in terms of the measurement, we're going to use MeasureLink. So on the MeasureLink software, let me just start that up. What we have in MeasureLink software, this is the monitor pane and this is the main window. So what we have is some pre-written scripts that we can run using MeasureLink with basically a touch of a button. The nice thing about MeasureLink is we've built it on a number of drivers for our own equipment. So for the Lakeshore M91, say. But also we can integrate third party equipment with the universal driver. So all of the equipment that we're using in the test can be listed in this monitor pane. We can change the configurations and have different configurations. What we have here is the M91 controller and it's on and then a permanent magnet driver that we've developed so that we can make the automation of this field uh, a little nicer. So okay, just getting to the measurement. I'll hit the sequence and then under measurements here, I'll go down to M91 multi-purpose hall effect analysis. Okay, so we have these first two windows that come up. Uh, I won't go through all of the details. We have basically here where the folders are, where the data folders will be located and what data that we have to be saved. We have, uh, can choose here uh, standard international units or CGS, I have it on CGS. So for this, what we have is uh, a standard resistance or high resistance. That refers to the mode that we're going to operate in. So for this sample, uh, I'm just gonna use the standard resistance and then a blanking time and a compliance voltage. So in standard resistance, standard mode, we're sourcing current and measuring voltage. So I so, uh, just wanted to have a compliance voltage there. 10 volts is the maximum for the M91 but you can set in a lower voltage if you're concerned about your sample. So I do all that and then hit start. 
the very nice properties of the M91 and therefore this tabletop system is the ability to optimize. This, this means we don't have to specify an excitation current. It will select, it will run a number of contact checks and allow us to optimize and select a excitation value uh, for us. Then also I'm just going to select resistivity and the hall. So uh, this will now complete the optimization. It will then automatically do a contact check, run the resistivity and hall. And notice here on the resistivity and hall, I haven't specified an excitation value. So what it's going to do, it says linked in the window. We're going to run the contact checks for optimization. That's going to use that excitation current to run the resistivity and also the fast hall. And then also the fast hall will link in the resistivity that we measured in the previous step to make the full determination. So all of that will happen when I hit the start button. Okay, so I hit start. Notice the first thing that happens is we get the optimization running. Then it runs a contact check. We get a lot of data filling in in the background on measure link. And then here we're running the resistivity value. Okay, so that's all completed now. The window here says that I need to switch the magnet into the position. So there's my magnet now in position at a one Tesla value. Hit OK. And it will now do the fast haul measurement, which happens very, very quickly. And uh, now we can just save the data file. Saving that data file takes all of these reports and charts and windows, uh, everything about the measurement, and saves it into one file on the system so that it's very good for historical documentation. Okay, so looking at the sample here, first section on contact check here shows us values for the R squared value. We've put in a minimum of 0 0.9999 for the linear fit of the IV curves. All of those were exceeded that, and so they passed. Uh, the resistivity section here, uh, we do calculate results for both A and B geometry. So in resistivity, we're measuring the four sourcing here, measuring here, and then we can rotate 90 and do a second geometry. All of those are using current reversal in each of those measurements. And all of the measurements are saved in the data files, but we give you the results here for A and B, and uh, the overall results are shown there. So for fast haul, so this is an indium arsenide sample, 24 times 10 to the three centimeters squared per volt seconds uh, is, a, is a fine value. Also shown and not, not so important for this sample is for each of the different calculations, it shows how many P-type determinations and how many N-type were shown. So if you were measuring a difficult sample and your noise band became close to the hall voltage, what you can get some, any one sample may have some chance of coming in um, either N-type or P-type. And so what you can see is for each independent evaluation allows you to get a very good determination of, of the material type, even, even for a difficult sample. Okay, so that really is the indium arsenide demo. What I'd like to do now is, uh, is show you our sample card and a little bit more difficult sample. Go ahead and put this probing card in. Okay, and then what we have here is a number of spring-loaded contacts. And I have a, so this is an indium arsenide sample. Go ahead and land these contacts. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, I'll go ahead and reload that sample. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this uh, setup. So I'm really right back here, ready to run again. And I think this time though, I'm just gonna do See if I've got my contacts landed well. I'm just going to go ahead and run just the contact check. It's asking me to go ahead and put the magnet back in zero. Forgotten to do that last time. Okay. And it's running the optimization and looking for contact check.
Okay, so I've got good, 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 good. You have perfect sample. We're pretty much ready to go here. That looks excellent. Okay, so I'll go ahead again and run the fully optimized measurements. It's going to rerun the optimization because I've asked it to. This is a very convenient feature if you're doing a temperature swept measurement where your resistivity is changing over a large value while you're changing temperatures. It will go ahead and reanalyze each, each temperature and allow you to keep a very optimized excitation value. Okay, I've got my one Tesla, so I'll go ahead and put that in now. And it will finish up by running the fast haul. So also notice how quickly the M91 is making these determinations. This is also a, a relatively difficult sample. Okay, so here's the summary report. What we get is a section on the contact check. All four contact checks exceed 0 0.9999. So they're all false, nothing's in compliance or overload. The resistivity section, come down here. The sheet resistivity of 284 milliohms per square. And then we also get a plus or minus 58 microohms. So this is the statistical analysis of, of the number of samples, which was 10. There's also reporting geometry A and B results. So for geometry A, we source on two adjacent contacts and measure on the other two, and then we can rotate that 90 and get a second geometry. So comparing those two numbers, you can see we have quite uniform sample. Down here in the fast haul, so we have the setup information here. The mobility has uh, come out to 72.7 centimeters square per volt second. So that's pretty appropriate for this P-type silicon sample. Again, a statistical analysis. Notice here that our hall voltage was actually two microvolts and our signal to noise was 164. So not, not too bad. Um, also again, our N type uh, was zero. So 10, 10 out of 10 evaluations of P type. So we can be reasonably certain it's a P type sample. Also included in this data file are, um, so we have the initial setup for how the system was run. We do also have our charts. So these are the four charts for the contact checks. This is particularly useful to view if one of your contacts was not made properly. You could see, uh, in other words, if, if contact one was not made properly, you would see it show up in this one, two contact check and four, one, these two. These other two may be just fine. So if you can look and see the common number between the two that are bad, you likely can just go back and adjust one of the contacts, make that. Um, additionally, we also keep a raw data file. So what this is, is uh, in order to make the system a lot less of a black box, we go ahead and record this large data set coming back for each one of the measurements done. So there's a, a report like this for contact check, resistivity, and fast haul. And what that does is gives us not only the inputs to the routine that was called, the skippy command that was called, it also gives us the summary results, and in fact, each one of the measurements that was made to make the determination of the hall measurement. So if you're having a problem with a measurement, it doesn't seem consistent, you definitely can come down into this level and look exactly what your sourced current was, what the measured current was, and what their voltage measured was. So you can look very specifically and look for problems in here. So it's not really a very convenient format for uh, plotting or anything but it does provide us a nice history to what the measurement, the measurement that happened. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for joining me for this demonstration of Lakeshore's new tabletop hall measurement system. For further information, consult our product page on www.lakeshore.com or contact sales at sales at lakeshore.com.